Hey everybody, so it is my favorite time of year on booktube when we all put out our top 10 reads of 2023 or the year, you know how it is. Um, and I watch so many of these videos, add so many books to my TBR, and I love making this video for you. So without further ado, let's get to my top 10 reads of 2023. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Um, I know it's been a bit since I've been here. Work has been crazy. I've been a little bit under the weather. Still cannot 100% hear from this year being honest. Uh, but hey, we're pushing through. That's this That's this time of year, right? We all have to deal with it. But that doesn't mean I don't want to share my top 10 reads with you. And this list was hard to put together, if I am being totally honest. Um, last week, I was on the Book Cougar, Book Cougar podcast. That was a mouthful for me there, um, which I've done for four years running, if you can believe that. Check them out. I link them on my Instagram. You can find them. Listen to the podcast. So many books we discussed. This list today is different than that list because I kept modifying it as we go along. I'm really happy with today's list, but you never know. This is my top 10 right now, top, top 10 amazing books. So without further ado, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please get these books from your local independent bookstore. I do believe every book I'm going to talk about today is out and available for you to purchase. Or if you're a library user, get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible. Okay, so at number 10, we're going to start with a, the book that I chose from the list of books my husband and I read together this year. If you've been on my channel or listening to my videos, you know that at the start of the year, my husband asked me to read a book a month with him in 2023. Now, he reads thrillers and horror. I don't normally read that, but I did have a really good time reading books with him. So at number 10, I have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This is from Dutton, and this book was full of twists and turns. I have to be honest with you. I did not see the ending coming. Um, this is sort of a Lizzie Borden take on a horror novel. I say on that myth because, you know, so much has been added on it. But what we have is we have a young woman who is like a healthcare uh, giver for people at the end of their lives. She has been on sabbatical for a while due to an incident that occurred. Um, I will not give that away because it plays a big piece in the whole entire puzzle. Um, but she's been called back by an employer and given a job to take care of a wealthy older woman who lives on this house at the top of town on the edge of cliff. That Everything that anyone knows about her is that she is the sole survivor from a night, and I think 1929, when her entire family was killed but her. And there is all this myth and legends. There's all the people are very scared. She arrives at the house. It's sort of dilapidated. There is a fantastic character like the housekeeper, which you just know there's something going on there. There's a yardsman who's sort of the good looking guy that lures all of that romantic tension. Um, but this book took so many twists and turns. I absolutely did not see. I thought it ended like four times, if I'm honest. Um, but... I didn't see it coming. And that is what makes a great thriller to me. I really enjoyed it. There were a couple of books from my husband and I's reading list that could have made this, but this is the one that I keep thinking about when I think, gosh, I did not see that coming. Um, so that's The Only One Left by Riley Sager out from Dutton. Now we're going to get back into the more normal Russell books, the literary fictions, the slightly science fiction-y stuff. At number nine, I have Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Adige Brenna out from Pantheon Books. Um, this book is one of those books that I think is sold one way, but is really at its heart something different. So I, you may know this book was shortlisted for the National Book Award. It was a read with Jenna Choi. So it has been out there and it is 100% worth the hype in the read. It is a um, sort of reimagining of America's criminal system where the, um, the people, the inmates, are able to choose to be part of this sort of fight club where if they win and kill a certain number of people, they can actually get their freedom. Um, there are two, at the heart of it is Loretta 
um, Thurwar, who I can never say her last name right, T-H-U-W-A-R, and Stax. They are a couple, a lesbian couple, that are on the same team, clearly have a strong connection to one another. Um, and we follow them through sort of the trials and tribulations of being part of this really economic juggernaut of people paying to watch others kill each other. Um, and what we wind up finding out, and what I think is so brilliant about the book, is there are so many different perspectives. We get not only the people who are doing the fighting, but we get sort of the people who are putting it on. We're getting the fan base. We're getting those who are um, affected by this, like the family of those who are fighting. We get the people who are protesting. Um, so what um, Nana Kwame Adige Brenna does so well is... He gives us this very whole pictured look. I mean, Jacqueline, yes, that's a train in the background. I can't do anything about it. It just happens. <laughs> um, but what's fascinating at its heart, this is really a love story between these two women and what they are willing to do for each other um, during this very strange and difficult time. I found this book compelling, the pages turning. It's a, a bit graphic, um, but... I think it makes sense to the overall message of the story. And I highly recommend Changing All Stars by Nana Kwame and DJ Brenna out from Pantheon. I know we're doing the new thing here. My husband is putting these pictures up. Um, I apologize, I'm not 100% used to it yet. Um, so I still have to do myself some markers. Um, but I hope you're liking it. I know we're trying some different things in 2024. So let me know what you think. Uh, number eight on my list is a book that just no one talked about. And it, it truly is saddens me because it's a book that I have not been able to get out of my head and that's The Daughtership uh, the Daughtership by Boo Trundle, also out from Pantheon. Pantheon scorned this year for me. Um, this is the story of Catherine, and this is the story of Catherine's mental health. What we learn is that she has sort of compartmentalized the issues and traumas of her life into different beings that represent different aspects of her life, and she's put them on this submarine. And this submarine is traveling along, but it's starting to fall apart because Catherine is starting to have a breakdown in her modern life. We find out through each of the different characters some of the things that triggered and caused Catherine to have these issues throughout her life. What is fascinating about this book is that there are so many different voices and every voice has real presence um, for who Catherine is in the now, in now, like in the present. Um, we see her dealing with her husband, dealing with her sort of situation with her relationship. Where does it really stand? The struggle she has communicating and connecting with her own children. But we sort of figure that out as each of these characters in the submarine and some surprise characters um, give us um, a sense of relevance, a sense of um, what's the word I'm looking for. They give us tech, ten, uh, what's the word? Oh, it's right down the top of my tongue. They give us, um, they give us the way to sort of see how everything became what it was. Um, that is not the word I want, but it is right there in my head. I thought this book was beautifully written. I think this book tackles a difficult topic in a very, very unique way. And I just don't think enough people read it. So, and I am obsessed with the author's name, The Daughtership by Boo Trundle. Boo Trundle is a fantastic name out from Pantheon. Please pick it up. Please give it a go. It's just a book that I haven't been able to get out of my head. Um, one book that was on my, in my last video and I just can't leave out because I have talked about it all year and I read it a long time ago is In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. This is out from Knopf. Um, I won't say much about this book other than it tore my heart out. It is the tale of a love story between two young boys that um, meet at a British boarding school and wind up going off to war during World War I and the travesties, travesties that war affects not only on them but their friend group, the people that they recognize as family, and just how they were so lied to about what war really is. And they go thinking it's some sort of grandiose thing and they get there and it's terrible. And through it all, they find each other. Um, I loved it. I, I don't check historical accuracy. I don't do any of that kind of stuff because I just got lost in Alan Wynn, Alice Wynn's story and I adored In Memoriam, Alice Wynn, Pantheon. Cannot recommend it enough. Okay. I told you that this list changed a lot. And the reason was that I read a book on the last day of 2023. It's a very, very short book. Um, 
that I can't believe it took me that long to read. But if you'll remember that, um, I want to get these right, New Directions put out these like golden book short stories. And this is the English Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt. Um, and they put out these little short stories and they are beautiful like little, they remind me of those books I read as a child. Only in look, not in content. This book is only 55 pages long. In 55 pages, Helen DeWitt is able to create an entire story that will leave you with your mouth dropping at the end, I'm telling you. At its heart, this is the story of a young girl who has been raised by her parents in a very posh lifestyle. She's out to lunch with her mom. A call comes in. She, they go back to the hotel. The next day, her mom is gone, and the authorities show up to say that she was kidnapped as a young child and everything she knew about her life is not what she knew. And she has been asked to write a book. That's all I'm gonna say. This book took turns. In 55 pages, I was all over the place. I think the character, the main character who is only 17, I cannot get enough of her. Her presence through these pages is fantastic. You all, it was a revelation. The English Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt out from uh, New Directions, this uh, golden book series. I don't know why it took me so long, but it floored me. Um, next on the list, where are we? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So number five on my list. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, something like that. You know, I'm not keeping a 100% count is Day by Michael Cunningham, out from Random House. This book, I have to say that some books I just love for the way the author writes. And Michael Cunningham can put a sentence together like few others. It is stunning, some of the lines in this book. Now, this book takes place on the same day in three consecutive years. Um, it's April... It's a day in April, April 5th in 2019, 20, and 21. At the start of the book, we meet a family. It is a mother, a husband, and two children. And the mother's brother lives upstairs in the house in sort of an extra apartment. And they have asked him to move out to give that space to their son so that they can have a bedroom for each child. Um, and there is a lot of turmoil about this. The sister and brother have created this imaginary Instagram account, and their connection is next level like they really are just together um and they are so i don't want to use the word codependent because i think that has a not a negative connotation in a way there is some negative connotation to their relationship but they are like they are in tune with one another but it's really not only just the two of them it's also her husband who has come to rely on this brother for really a sense of safety and self he is an ex-musician trying to reinvent himself and the brother is really the only one listening and supporting the children are the children are great they are very um quirky and interesting and i have the hiccups and i apologize for that um, i'm trying to get through it i don't know what's going on here they just came out of nowhere um but what we find is that this family is sort of been a unit and now it's going to come apart then in the second story the covid pandemic interrupts and the brother has gone to Iceland and is stuck. The family is stuck in the house. And then the third part is sort of the repercussions of all of that. The beauty of these, I just can't even express enough the language. And I can't say how well um, Michael Cunningham builds these characters and develops in so little time, really, the connection between them all. I thought it was gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And I can't stop thinking about it. I have not read enough Michael Cunningham. I've read The Hours, I've read one other book, and now I've read this, and I can't remember the other book's title because, you know. Um, but I need to read more. Day, his new novel, highly, highly recommend. Okay, we're down to my top four. At number four is Family Meal by Brian Washington out from Riverhead Books. I think Brian Rock, I have two authors on this list actually, where I'm going to say they are new, young, queer uh, men of color that are working their way into probably my top five favorite current writers. And Brian Washington's short story collection, Lot, his, um, 
his novel Memorial. I want to make sure that I'm saying, yes, Memorial. And now Family Meal. Oh, the man breaks my heart. Um, what is this book about? Well, one, it's about food. And food alone could be a conversation about this whole book. But really at its heart, we have a young man who has lost his partner in, in Los Angeles to a horrific crime and has not been able to really find a way out of that. So what does he do? He returns home to Houston, where he is really just using sex and alcohol and avoidance as a way of coping with loss. He winds up running into, or <laughs> it's not as circumstantial as we think, um, his best friend from when he was younger, who he lived with for many years, shows up at the bar and their relationship starts to rekindle. And the complications of family and chosen family and difficult times and dealing with loss. And this book is really about how sometimes people have to go to the brink, the brink of the edge of everything in order to turn that corner to find themselves again. And sometimes that requires an immense amount of patience from those who love us. Um, it's just beautifully written. There's so much about food. The relationship between the main character and his partner uh, and the main character and his best friend tear jerking. It's so, so good. Um, I just think Brian Washington does something with people that is, it's just captured so beautifully in this book. Highly recommend Family Meal by Brian Washington out from Riverhead. Okay. Next on my list. So my top three, I have to be honest, it, they go back and forth. I loved all three of these books so much and to, and to be putting any one in one spot just say that it's a fluid top three, okay? But we're going to talk about Wellness by Nathan Hill, out from Knopf. I cannot with this book. This book, at first I thought I would not be able to get on with it. It is dense. Like, the writing is very dense. There is, like, pages and pages of text. But it reads like a dream. Nathan Hill is hilarious at times. But what is this book really about? This is the story of a young couple throughout mo almost their entire relationship up to sort of present time. They fall in love at first sight. They see each other across an alleyway in two separate apartments and become obsessed once with one, one another. And eventually when they meet, they just automatically connect and know that they're in love. But love has bumps and the roads of relationships have ups and downs. And this book goes through all of those from children to the desire to try something new to when your partner turns into someone you thought he wasn't or she wasn't or wants something from you they never you never thought they would um this book just tackles so many different aspects of the human part of relationships um and i kid you there is a scene in a grocery store with the mom and her toddler during their terrible twos I was laughing out loud. There are a lot of those, but it's also really sad because, um, as my friend Emily said, because I think it's tough to watch a relationship go through those tough parts and go up and down and you're rooting from them. And at the very end, there's hope. But is that hope because someone acquiesced? And is that something to be cheerful about or something to be sad about? I think the book really leaves that up to you as the reader. I thought this book was brilliant. I, I, I know Oprah picked it. I know it was an Oprah book. I know that a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, it's so big. It is worth every moment of your time. I absolutely promise. Wellness by Nathan Hill, out from Knopf. Trust me, it's worth your time. Okay, the last two books on my list. I was just talking about Brian Washington, and now I'm gonna talk about Brandon Taylor and the Late Americans, also out from Riverhead Books. I cannot with Brandon Taylor. He cannot write anything that I don't absolutely love. He is in my top five favorite current writing authors, to be honest. I love everything I read by him. This is a college novel, sort of a campus novel set in Iowa. It's the story of a group of people that all, I'm gonna not say friends because 
that's a ve- they are a group of people that know each other and hang out, but not at all times do I think they are friendly with one another. Um, it deals with artistic expression. It deals with relationships. It deals with sex, sex as currency, sex as identity, um, sex as power. It deals with money, and it deals with the socioeconomic part of college that not many people talk about. Those who are in university and able to survive versus those who are in university working when they're not in class just to attend. Um, It's about the difficulties between trying to find yourself in your own identity while others put different identities on you. Um, This book, this story is beautiful. It is tough. It is bleak. It is so good. Um, I just think when Brandon Taylor writes a book, it just automatically speaks to me as a person. Um, biased, and I'm, I'm okay with that because I think he is brilliant. This is The Late Americans, Brandon Taylor, out from Riverhead. So now you ask, Russell, what was your top read of the year? What's going to be number one on this list 20 minutes in? Um, and it is a book that I had no idea about until it arrived from the publisher, and I was just like, wow, I don't know anything about this one. And then I started it on page one, and next thing I knew, I was on page 200. And that's Northwoods by Daniel Mason out from Random House. And I have to say, one, they sent this beautiful bookmark with it, this beautiful wooden bookmark. And this book, oh my gosh, y'all, I think about it every day since I I read it. Um, And what I think is so brilliant about this book is what it does in such a unique way. So the main character of this book is a house. It is a house in the in the New England area where um, it's like in the middle of the woods and we follow it from like colonial times all the way through modern times. Not only the house, the land, the trees, the rivers, the, the mountains, the rocks. We get to see how the house changes over time with the people who live in it. We get to see it as the home of a woman sort of living secluded who takes in a, um, a woman from a colony, American colony, on the run, lets her have a baby. Things happen in that um, area. We then want to watch it turn into an orchard, and then we turn, it turns into a sanctuary for a painter who is in love with someone he should not be and there is so much that goes on and it gets to modern times and the house is currency the house has value the land as sanctuary i don't know how to explain what daniel mason has done here other than made this place a character that watches history go by and you are along for the ride and it is phenomenal i cannot tell you how much i love this book i thought it was brilliant Um, And I just, I know a lot of people were talking about it, but I don't know a lot of people that read it. I hope you pick it up. I hope you read it. I absolutely adored it. That was Northwoods by Daniel Mason, my number one pick for 2023. So I know this is a very interesting list. I have a number of books that I know you probably thought you would see on this list. It was hard to make, but all 10 of these books are 100% worth your time. And I hope one or two, or maybe all 10, wind up on your TBR. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone. (laughs) 